David Navarro scores a dramatic win in the final round of the Gibraltar Masters. Unfortunately, his TPR is not good enough to make it to the playoffs. Still a beautiful game. David joins us in our studio. David, congratulations on a last round win. Thank you very much, Tanya. Seven and a half points in an interesting game as well. Quite fascinating. Yes, it was quite interesting, but uh, not that well played on my part because I believe that in this position after c5, d c5, queen d2, if black plays b6, which is not forced, maybe there's something like knight a6 returning in the pawn. I believe f4 should be really promising for white because black is underdeveloped. You played quite aggressive today. Yes. <laughs> But uh, okay, in this position, I did not exactly have to, but if black completes his development and then pushes f5, uh, I might uh, end up worse. Okay. Uh, yes. So I sort of had to. Okay, f4, queen e7, and now the position is, uh, looks quite promising for white, but not, it's not easy to suggest anything concrete. For example, I can play a useful developing develop move, rook d1, but okay, d6 is not such a strong threat yet. Mm. The, yeah, the question is what is black going to play now? For example, h6 is not that great as white can take on h6 when this fails to knight g5. Ah, H5? Yes, <laughs> I, have yeah. I have just spotted it as well. Great. Okay, so it fails to uh, D2, I hope, this time, really. It works. Um, uh, I'm not 100% sure if it works. So you want Knight G5, you want to play F6. F6, I mean, it's still tricky. Maybe Rook E1, Queen F6, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. I'm not even sure. Can you sure. go Rook F1? Yes, I can. Good idea. And now maybe Rook D4, Queen D4. I mean, it's tricky. Maybe, I think it's probably winning somehow, but uh, by far this not as clear. It's a very creative play. So you just want to get your Knight on G5 yes. after cutting off the Queen. Yes. But you decided to go for... F5 instead? Yes, I believed it to be good, by the way. Dennis uh, proposed Fe5, which I discarded in view of Queen E5, but after Rook D1, it's true that the, uh, the Queen is not that well placed here, so I don't know, it was another option, but okay, F5, H6, I believed to have some tactics here, but I could not find anything. I calculated to, uh, Literally, and anything here, knight f7, fg6, knight e6, f6, uh, like... Uh, All the lines would yes. sacrifice something. Yes, even d6. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, I mostly relied on this move, but unfortunately then I realized that black can just play king h7 because it's very important to bring the pieces into play for him. Right. Because if he plays bishop e8, I can take this pawn and uh, those pieces remain out of play. Whereas after mm. king h7, so you think it's best for black to sacrifice the piece back? Yes. I, okay, he would be a pawn up and I would have compensation perhaps. And if I play this, there is just bishop e8 and right. black protects everything. Okay, he cannot develop that quickly, but uh, I don't have any mating threats, I'm afraid. So it's unclear to me. So knight f3. Uh, and now I still believe the position to be good, but I could not find anything special. Ef5 should be fine. And now, uh, Dennis Kadrich uh, proposed uh, bishop h6, which I also saw, but now uh, I rejected knight h4 yeah. on account of, uh, probably on account of this. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's Thank it's you. Because there might be some queen d4, if nothing else. Yeah. And then in some lines he can just trade off yes, the queen, yes. right? But he suggested knight d4, which is oh, probably wow. stronger. And I mean, it's... Uh, so you just want to take on f5? Yes, it's dangerous for black. Black can also transpose into some endgame, but uh, more difficult for him. But maybe he can take and play knight e5. I mean, it's complex and I believe knight h4 to be a good move. But in this tournament situation that you came in today morning, complex is exactly the kind of game you were hoping for? Uh, if I were not so tired, I would be hoping for it. But uh, I believe the sacrifice to be good and yes. I believe my position to be good. But uh, I mean, probably everybody was tired towards the end of the tournament now. So you mentioned you had gone to the rock and that's why yes, uh, up to the rock. 
not today, yesterday, yesterday in the morning, but then I... But you say you got tired, but the last two games have been very beautiful games, David, okay. from your end. I'm not sure, but I think this was not. I mean, this was very dramatic with some beautiful ideas, but the game itself was not beautiful. But okay, I mostly expected bishop h3 when I can either play similarly as in the game when it's similar, but to I am a temp not tempo up, but uh, in the game there was queen on h4 and my pawn on h3 right. and it was black to move. And here I have some quite dangerous threats, but it's four three pawns. So it's double edged and another option was queen e1, which I also saw, but uh, I was not 100% sure about uh, moves like f5 when black just uh, returns an exchange and hopes to survive somehow. Right. Okay, he's after all three pawns up That's for a lot exchange. of pawns. Yes, I mean, it's unclear to me. Right, let's, how did it proceed yeah. after this? Yes, I just blundered something here. I think probably already knight h4 was not that great and now I played something really wrong. I should probably play something like rook f1. Uh, I mean, the problem is that if I play like this, there is knight e4 okay. and black is fine or perhaps between. more than fine because he's two pawns up. Yes. So, rook h5, but I just missed that I was not trapping the queen. And uh, okay, if I take on h6, I'm at least a pawn down, which was not exactly my what intention. You wanted? I wanted to play a3, winning the queen, and then I spotted queen e4, winning the game. Oh. So, yes. I played bishop c4, threatening a3 or bishop d2. So, so, black can't take on h5 because the queen is getting trapped? Oh, he can, but it's. Uh, Variable for white. Yes. Yes. So b5, but okay. Now I'm fighting for survival. Survival. Rook h4. Luckily, this gives white quite a serious counterplay. It it's probably a draw because if black takes. Yeah. That's just, you want to go queen f5? Yes. It, oh, yes. Right. Exactly. Queen f5. Yeah. King. G, there's King also c3, which yeah, should probably be a draw. But yes. Queen f5. Yeah, thank you. And it's uh, probably a draw. Right, so you'll just give a perpetual. Yes. A pretty line. Yes, <laughs> and after e4, I'm probably worse. I did not go bishop e2 for some reasons connected with knight d5. I mean, the bishop was sometimes hanging here, but uh, okay, here. So you were still evaluating this position as bad for you when you were playing? Uh, I was. I was trying to calculate lines. You were not thinking about I mean, evaluation. I mean, it depends on concrete lines. Yes. And uh, I felt I spoiled my position quite a lot, but I did not know how much. So probably, I don't know how, but it seems to me that black was better somewhere. But there always seems like you'll have counterplay on the king side after taking the 8-6 yes. pawn. Like it is a dangerous position for black, Yes, no? it, I always have counterplay, but another question if, if it is enough. Or not. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yes, so rook d5, there were possibly also other options, but I mean, the trick is that after king g7, I have queen c3 once again, and... So you have this nice way of repeating moves after king f6, yes. h6, and then you take um, it, it's perpetual. Not, not even sure if it's perpetual, because if I manage to bring my second rook in play, it can be dangerous, but most likely it's perpetual, yeah. you are probably right. Yes, so rook d5, and I mean, I... Unfortunately, don't have queen c1 in view of knight e8. So this position is where we had Vasily with us, Ivanchuk mm -hmm. with us mm -hmm. here in this, and he was looking at this and he was thinking about queen c1. Me too, but uh, I just couldn't see how to equalize here. I mean, I don't know if f6 or f5 is the move, but probably f5. Right. I just saw something like this and now black protects everything. And, uh, yeah, you don't have a... I mean, I'm still two pawns down and I couldn't see anything concrete. Right. Actually, when we were looking at this position, we were also thinking if black has a move like knight h5 here. Did this come into your... Were you thinking about this at all? No. No, but you just knight e8. I just like knight e8. Actually, even after queen c3, we were wondering what you had in mind after knight e8 now. I believed it to be the only move, but in fact, bishop takes h6 is perfectly playable. Okay. I tried to play rook g4 to provoke f6. Right. And now either a4 or... Without a4, I want to play something, I don't know, let's say a4, c6, uh, I take probably. I'm not 100% sure if I should take, but yeah. okay, black has some ideas connected with f5, that's the problem. And you just take a pawn. Yes, I, I mean, here it's fine because white plays queen c7, 
I'll give some good check. I mean, this looks really good. And if black goes here, okay, he so will be mated queen by queen g4. Nice. But okay, black can play rook f8, but I have at least the perpetual yes. here. And, but the problem is if black plays f5 in such lines, uh, I can also have such a position with pawn on a2 and c7. Yes, yes. The problem is that if I go here now, uh, there is a real issue with rook queen d1. Uh, yes, sorry. No, it's not. Because true. now, uh, if I play the same, I don't have check on h4, and I just. Uh, oh, right. This is such a subtle point that your rook is uh, worse placed yes. on g5, and now you, he can just go king g7. Yes. Let me just get that. I mean, Try and get that on the board. Let's say yes. something like this, and then you just run. Yes. Very interesting. But he played bishop h6 here, David, and after rook h6. Okay, this is probably the only move. I actually b considered bishop h6 impossible, but it's not. It's it still works. And we were yes. thinking maybe after a4 he could have gone c6 here. Is this something that... I would have exchanged queens and... And just the grabbed game. the pawn back. Yes. <laughs> okay. The reason why I didn't do it now was that after queen g3, if I decided to grab the b5 pawn yeah. uh, by, by minus of rook h5. Don't they have f6? Uh, h4. Sorry. Okay. No, Is no, there no. not any? Okay, can I use yeah, my yeah, pen yeah, for this? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you can try this one. I'll try okay, it. I will try. From this side. No, the other from side. Really? F6? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Oh. So or not. <laughs> I, maybe not. Uh, so okay. I, so h4, the problem is black can play rook d8. And I, I'm not sure about moves like king h2, but oh. the real problem is that there e3. will be e3. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And if I play something... Let's try and get it. If I, yes. If, and if king... If king g1, there is e3 and yes. black is winning. Yes. Which is not Very nice. nice. Okay, not it is nice, nice but not for me. <laughs> yes. Yes, sorry. And <laughs> now black can just play e3 and then take on f6, uh, yes. remaining a pawn up with uh, Not a pleasant chances. ending for you at all. Yes, exactly. So in, you provoked a4 and c6, but instead he went rook c6. And where do you think was the final mistake from black? Okay, it came later. I was more afraid of queen g5 when it might transpose if I allowed the transposition and rook d8. Try. And I think my position is actually dangerous. I wanted to play like this. And then perhaps give check, even though I'm not sure if it's obligatory, uh, if I cannot start with this. And at least I could not see how black is going to win. I mean, after queen f4, I have king g1, and it seems to... I mean, at least there is no easy win, probably. Right. But uh, it might be winning for black, or maybe. So rook d8, uh, rook h4 is a tricky move. I, here I probably could have taken transposing to the previous line. Uh, Rook h4 was a very tricky move yeah. actually because now black has to make some unpleasant choice. It's not so easy to find a yes. move. I'm threatening queen g3, queen g3 and there is no longer queen g5. Rook g4. Yes. This is your threat, yes. rook g4. And uh, I decided on it when after I realized that bishop e2 can be a good yeah. move. Now your bishop comes into yes. the game as well. And now I have compensation. I don't know how good is my position, but I really don't like queen g6. We are both short of time, but okay. okay. You thought king f8 here. King f8, because if I give a check, there follows king e7. Queen c7? Yes, okay. Rook d7. Queen a5? I saw, yes, queen a5, you are right. And uh, okay, queen f2. Yeah. Ah, sorry. And I just couldn't see anything special. I mm. mean, I don't know what's happening. I have no idea, really. I can give a check. Yeah, you, I mean, white shouldn't be in danger here, though, no? I'm not even, not sorry, danger. not even sure about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so instead it went queen g6 and queen c7. Yes, now it's over, probably. Uh, Okay, why is it? Why is queen g6 such a bad move? Because now black's rook uh, cannot go forward because of mate on h8. h8. Very nice. And uh, otherwise, I just get a passed pawn, which probably decides yes. the issue. But here, after king f8, I probably would have taken like this. When white's position seems to me uh, more pleasant to play, given that I'm still threatening some checks here, mm. and that there might also be some queen a3 ideas, but I mean, it's still quite unclear and uh, maybe it's still around equal, I have right. no idea. But here it collapsed simply because you placed black's rook in a bad spot. And then after this, uh, this is just, there's nothing to play for for black anymore. Yes, because if he plays queen g3, there rook will g4. be, yes, exactly, <laughs> right. Yes. Very nice, yes. and then this runs into you win the queen. Yeah. 
you know, you say, David, that it wasn't a perfect game. I'm still trying to get mm. this. Yeah, it wasn't a perfect game and maybe it had mistakes. But you took your chances in the last round. Yes. Because also, uh, you had to, to you, fight for the top prizes. Okay, I did not have to, but I wanted to. You wanted to. I mean, it was not a perfect game, but uh, nice to watch, probably. <laughs> nice to watch and also very interesting to analyze. Uh, now, going into this... Uh, the playoff situation, you were mentioning that you're probably not going to be in the no, top four. No, my tie break is uh, rather bad. So I will happily watch. Happily uh, watch everyone games. else get yes, stressed. I need some rest already. I played a tough tournament. It uh, looked uh, like a failure just some four rounds ago. ago. And uh, then I bought a chocolate and there was written on it that uh, I, I, I don't know. that. Uh, there is something like smooth finish. So I was joking that if oh I score uh, less than three points out of last four games, I am going to claim the money back. <laughs> but uh, I did not have to, as I scored three and a half out of uh, four. The chocolate message turned out to be right, because also the last two games, you just won back to back. And well, a strong finish. Yes. Um, happy with the way Gibraltar 2020 has gone for you? Uh, yes, actually I was quite lucky because many players deserved uh, my place more than me because they faced a much stronger opposition. I mean, I had no weak opponents, but still they had even considerably stronger opponents. And, but I mean, last year I scored uh, 7 out of 10, okay. even though I was uh, in shared lead uh, after round eight and basically all the time until round now, nine. And uh, then uh, I performed badly in the last two games and uh, uh, even though my tournament uh, had been quite good, so this time it's the other way around. Well, well done and thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insights on your game. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for letting me show the game. Uh, our viewers love it. Thank you so much, David. Thank you.